Oh, goodness, I need to stop doing that. I need to stop doing that. Can we start over? Hello, everybody. Let's start over. <laughs> That's two times this week. It's Friday, everybody. It's Friday, May the 15th. Thank goodness it's Friday. Oh, my glory. Thank goodness it's Friday. Guess what? <laughs> okay, let's start all over. If you saw the title of this video, we have a great big announcement. Great big announcement. <laughs> oh, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Great big announcement. Y'all, today is going to be the last official quilt block that we are sewing live for this series. For this series. There's lots of stuff down in the description box of this video. Okay, I've been really mindful of paying attention to how many quilt blocks we were making. <laughs> paying attention to how many quilt blocks we're making and their sizes. Because I want to put all these together as a quilt. Now, you might be doing something different. You might be doing something different with all your quilt blocks. You might be making a couple of quilts with yours. <laughs> Good, you can hear me now. That's twice this week, y'all. Thank goodness it's Friday. So keeping the size of our blocks and how many we've made, today makes 53 quilt blocks, y'all. Uh... I've been working on a quilt layout and I came up with a quilt layout. So if you stay tuned to the end of today's video, instead of showing you tomorrow's quilt block, I'm going to show you the layout which I plan on using to put this quilt block together. But you'll find a PDF copy in the description box and you'll also find the final PDF of little pictures for the quilt blocks starting with block 49 to 53, the last remaining pictures, and that does include today's block in there. That PDF is also in the description box of today's video. So if you stick around to the end or if you have to leave before we're done, make sure you come back because I'm going to pull up on the screen the layout for this quilt. I'm excited about it. And we're going to talk about it, and if you have any questions about it, we'll go over that. This is not the end of this series. It's not the end, y'all. Today, Virginia went into phase one, and I pulled up a map on the Google, looking at all the different states, and the majority of states have already entered phase one of transitioning back to normal. <laughs> it's not normal, but starting to open up things. I know many of you have already started going back to work. Today, Virginia started to transition into phase one. Some things are opening up. You still gotta wear the mask. You still gotta social distance. Things aren't fully open yet, but we're starting to. With that being said, many of us are gonna start going back to work. Plus the size of this quilt, y'all, it's gonna be a queen size quilt. So we're gonna stop with today's block. We're going to take Saturday, Sunday, and Monday and give you those days to make blocks that you haven't made yet to catch up. You still might not be fully caught up, but Tuesday we're coming back live and we're going to do some fun stuff putting together this quilt top. So we'll still be coming live every day until this quilt top is done. But I have some really fun things and fun different ways of filling in some areas on this quilt that are still empty. We'll go over all that at the end of today's video. It's so great to see everybody. So great to see you. Thank you so much to my moderators. Thank y'all so much. It takes so much stress off of me knowing that you are keeping an eye on the chat. And if you have questions for me, it would be really helpful if you put them in all caps if you can. Just helps my eyes be able to catch them faster when scrolling through. 
Y'all, I am so glad that y'all followed me along. Just to let you know, I'm not a beginner quilter. I've been quilting for years. But piecework was not my strong point. My favorite thing to do is applique. So piecework was not my strong point, but I've seen a huge improvement since the beginning of this series to where we are now. I've still got lots of work to do improving stuff, but I've seen a lot of growth in my skills in these 52 quilt blocks. Today makes number 53. So yeah, I've improved quite a bit since the beginning. All right, so I have my pieces cut out for today. <laughs> I have my pieces cut out for today. The example you see on the screen of the block, that's the colorway that I'm uh, using. However, I made my blue darker because I think it really needed it. I think it really needed it. And I'm really happy with the pieces that I've cut. So those are ready to go. Y'all are so welcome. Don't feel sad, Beverly. We're still coming and we're still doing lives. We're just transitioning. It's going to look different for the rest of this series because we're going to do some other fun stuff with this quilt. Okay, so don't be sad. And even after this series is over, I've had so much practice coming live that it's easier for me now. So we can do other fun stuff in lives and still have this social time with each other. It's probably not going to be every single day though. <laughs> it probably won't be every single day once this quilt is done, but it'll definitely be on a much more regular basis. Yes. Oh, it's so good to hear that Jadira says she probably wouldn't have tried any of these blocks, but she has. That's so great. Libby has seen improvement. Diana has seen improvement. That is so wonderful. I'm so happy. That makes my day right there. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into making the starstruck geese. We have lots of flying geese units to make today. There's going to be 12 of them. And then we're going to transition. I'm going to pull on the screen my quilt layout and we're going to talk about it. And then we're going to talk about it. All right. So let's see screens. Here we go. If you missed the pieces for today's block, you can come back on the replay and pause the screen or check out yesterday's because I put it at this at the end of yesterday's video. So here's our pieces for today. I went with a darker blue. I think it goes much better with my fabrics. Gold and a red, although it's not truly red red. It's more like a burnt brick red. <laughs> thank y'all so, so much. Thank you. Yes, and thank you to my moderators. I'm going to tell you... I'd have a hard time doing the videos without them. Yes, I would. So for our flying geese, guess what? We're cutting up everything except for this one lonely little two and a half by two and a half. Everything else is getting cut. So let's start with the red two and seven eighths by two and seven eighths. There's two of them. The blue ones, there's 10. 2 and 7 eighths by 2 and 7 eighths. These will be our first cuts for today. We're going to have quite a bit of sewing into this block with our flying geese. So these 2 and 7 eighths by 2 and 7 eighths, I'm going to line these up two at a time. We are cutting these one time right down the middle. I'm going to line them up on my mat. There's two blue ones stacked. Another two. I'll cut these. I'm 
right down the middle. We're making little triangles. Let's move those off to the side. I still have six more left to cut. Today I have some really funny, well, a couple of them are funny. <laughs> They're kind of like this or that, but these are called which is worse? Which is worse questions? Kind of like this or that. Which is worse? So let's go ahead and get started with that. I'll line these two fabrics up here. They don't want to play along. Which is worse? Being extremely late for a big event or getting stood up on a date? Which one do you think is worse? Being extremely late for a really important big event or being stood up on a date. Which one do you think is worse? These are the last six of the two and seven eighths by two and seven eighths. And there are all of our small little triangles. I'm gonna give everybody a second to cut all of their two and seven eighths by two and seven eighths. Thank you so much, Betty. I do feel like I've gained a lot of experience coming on live, sewing in front of a lot of people live makes me really nervous. I've gotten a lot of experience in this series. So lots of growth for me too. Lots of growth. Which one do you think is worse? being extremely late for a big event or being stood up for a date. Both has happened to me before. <laughs> and I'll tell you, for me, being extremely late to a really important big event, oh, my nerves can't take it. I don't, yeah, I don't like being late anyways. So I would pick being extremely late for an important event. Someone stood me up, that just lets me know that they were not worth the time anyway, right? <laughs> they did me a favor. <laughs> That's just my way of thinking about it. But everybody's different, right? And I love that. We're all different. But for me, I don't like being late. I don't like being five minutes late to a dentist appointment. I don't like being late to anything. I'm usually early to everything. So for me, that would be more stressful. All right. So we have our two and seven eighths cut one time right down the middle. The next thing we're going to pull over to the board is three of the gold fabrics, and these are five and a quarter by five and a quarter. We are cutting these two times. Miss Wanda, the big, the big announcement for today is that Starstruck, the block we're making today, is the last official block for this series. So I hope you can stick around because I'm going to be showing you some stuff at the end of this video. This piece here, there's three stacked, one on top of each other. We're gonna cut it first, right down the middle, corner to corner. Just like that. And then we're turning them and we're gonna cut them one more time. Three layers of fabric is a little tricky to cut them nice and accurately. So if you need to separate your fabrics and cut them, by all means do that. Sometimes they slide around, right, when you stack them up. So just make sure they're not sliding around. If you're stacking, 
if they are sliding too much, separate them and cut them out that way. We're going to line this up. We're making one more cut. That's going to give us, see, just like that. I just cut the tip off of my... <laughs> The little tip is missing. That's exactly what I was talking about. We should have 12 little gold triangles at this point. Did you square that block before you cut? Da -da -da -da. Did I square the block? The block was square. It was like this. Da -da 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 -da. It was like this. I cut them Cut these pieces out at five and a quarter by five and a quarter. Cut them one time like that. And then we flipped them and we cut them one more time. So there we go. There's all of our little triangles for this block. Thank y'all so much. Thank you so, so much. All right, so let's bring this board back in. Before we lay out our pieces, we're going to do a little bit of sewing. So I just want you to see my color palette here and where you should be. We have little blue triangles. We have little red triangles and we have 12 gold ones that are a little bit bigger. I want you to catch up right to where we are. We still have this one little lonely two and a half by two and a half inch square. We're not doing anything with him yet. All right, our next, which is worse. I so agree, Diane. No matter where you are, how much experience you have, how much you've learned, there's always room for improvement and new things to learn. Always. I kind of like that, though. We should always be, you know, trying to improve, learn something new. Keeps our minds nice and sharp. <laughs> our next, which is worse? Having food stuck in your teeth or something stuck in your eye. Beverly, you looked for the mat yesterday and it was sold out on Amazon. Yeah, keep looking. Keep looking. I have a feeling because of the great big mass production that everybody went into. Fabric sold out. <laughs> Rotary cutters sold out. Cutting mats sold out, interfacing sold out, elastic sold out. I'm thinking that slowly things are going to start getting stocked back up. You could check with Joann's as well or Walmart or Michael's. Michael's might not have it. Maybe Hobby Lobby. Eventually stuff is going to start getting stocked back up. Which is worse, having something stuck in your teeth? Or something stuck in your eye. Here are all of our pieces. All right. Let's go ahead and make sure we have our sewing, mas sewing machine set at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Here's what I want y'all to do. I want you to stack all of your gold triangles together just like this. There should be 12 of them. I want you to stack all of your red triangles together and then all of your blue ones. All right. Let me just get them moved over just like this. I want you to take four gold triangles. So count one, two, three, four. Lay them right here, just like that. Take your red ones with the long edge and lay them just like this. And four, 
blue triangles. One, two, three, four. And lay them out just like this. We're going to make four flying geese units that are arranged just like this. The rest will have blue on both sides. Like this. And like this. Go ahead and arrange your flying geese just like that. Four of them with the red on one side and blue on the other, just like you see on the screen. Ah, oh, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. I've had, oh, it can be really painful to get like a popcorn shell stuck in between your teeth. That can be so painful, like, like a toothache, right? So I almost say food stuck in my teeth for me would be worse. I don't know. They're both pretty, pretty bad. <laughs> They're both pretty bad. I'm going to pick food stuck in your teeth. You know what's really bad is food stuck in your teeth while you're talking to someone and then you walk away and you check and you had like something stuck right between your teeth the whole time you were talking to somebody. That's the worst. <laughs> That's the worst. Ooh, Sally said many manufacturers are just now starting production and shipping back up. Yes. So I do think it's going to take, you know, we have to be patient. But I do think things are going to start getting made and stocked back up. We're just going to have to continue being patient. Especially as, you know, Virginia just started phase one today. We're not full force going back out, but we're slowly transitioning I think all of the manufacturers, they're going to slowly start getting things made and shipped to all the stores. Something to be excited about, though. <clears throat> Something to be excited about. <clears throat> because it's real easy for me to get things mixed up. We're going to make these four flying geese units because they're different. We're going to make these four first. And then these piece of cake. It doesn't matter which side you start on. It doesn't matter if you, you know, they're the same on both sides. Let's start with these. We're going to flip the red triangle onto the gold one. When you do that... When you flip it over, we're matching up the raw edge at the bottom. And your extra little flippy tail should be at the top of the gold triangle. We're sewing this seam right there. Quarter inch seam allowance. I'm going to do all four of the red triangles first. Yes, Miss Debbie, we'll be doing a live after this series once a week. I don't know what we're going to come live about, but I have lots of projects lined up. And I'm not sure which day I'm going to dedicate to that, but yes. Sally, I totally agree. If you can shop locally, the local stores, they need so much help. Big box stores need help too. But y'all, the small businesses, if we can support them, that would be great. All right, the next one, as we sew these four triangles, which is worse, stepping on a snake or walking into a wasp nest? Which one do you think would be worse? I'm going to line these up and sew the four 
red triangles. There's the first one. Which one do you think would be worse? I think walking into a wasp nest would be pretty painful. Lining up the second one. Bringing over the third one. Thank you so much, Joan. Aww. Thank you so much. That is so nice. All right, we're on our last red triangle. Last red triangle. Alrighty, let's warm this iron back up. Thank you so much, Joan. That's awesome. I appreciate that a lot. All right, let's cut the little connecting threads here, here, and here. <laughs> when I press these, I'm going to press my seams towards the red triangle just like that. All right, did you warm up? Are you ready to go? We're gonna get these four red triangles pressed open and then we'll be adding the blue ones to the other side. If you just joined us today, instead of this or that, we're doing which is worse. <laughs> which is worse, stepping on a snake or walking into a wasp nest? Ooh, that's hot, hot, hot. There we go. So the red side is done, and you guessed it. To finish up these flying geese, we're adding the blue. Again, when you flip the blue triangle over, It's gonna line up on that bottom raw edge, just like that, and your extra little flippy tail is gonna be at the top of the gold triangle. Miss Dawn, nope, we're not doing any more blocks. Any more blocks, I know you just got here. Today is actually the last official block for this series. Next week we're tra transitioning into putting this quilt together. And at the end of this video today, as soon as we're done with this block, I'm gonna pull up on the screen my layout. So if you want to make the same exact quilt that I am making, you'll be able to get that. All right, we're sewing these last triangles for this set of flying geese units, the blue side. There's our first one. 
flipping over the second. I know several of y'all have just joined, so let's catch up. Which is worse, showing up extremely late to a really important big event or getting stood up on a date? Having food stuck in your teeth or something in your eye? And uh, the third one was stepping on a snake or walking into a wasp nest. Which one is worse? Yeah, we're still going live for this series, but we're transitioning into a different, something different. Last official block for this quilt series. I've got two more blue ones. So here's our third one. And one more. Flip it over and sew it. So this is four of our 12 flying geese. <laughs> Four of the 12. I wanted to knock these out first because these do have an order which they have to go in. When I press these, I'll be pressing towards the blue small triangle. Let's see. <laughs> this next one. Think about being out in public. Out in public, which one would be worse? Which one would be worse? Splitting your pants in public or doing a pee pee in the pants? Which one would be worse? You're out shopping. Which would be worse? Splitting your pants open or having an accident? Get these pressed. Yeah, which one do you think would be worse? <laughs> Splitting your pants or having an accident? How did we cut the main fabrics? All right, let me get this last one pressed and we'll go over that because I do want to give everybody a chance who's sewing a chance to catch up. So our pieces in the beginning, we had uh, red and blue squares that measured two and seven eighths by two and seven eighths. Those get cut one time right down the middle, corner to corner. And then we had three gold squares that measured five and a quarter by five and a quarter. And those three squares got cut twice, right down the middle and then flip them and cut them one more time. So that made 12 gold triangles. So there's these four flying geese units, just like that. While you're catching up, I'm gonna go ahead and trim off my little tails up at the top.
You can also trim off the little tails that stick off to the sides if you want to. So we'll do that and I'll give everybody a chance to get their pieces pressed. You're welcome. <laughs> I like my color choices for today. All right, there's those four. The next ones will just be easy sewing because it doesn't matter which side you start on and they're both the same color on each side. So we'll just knock out some chain piecing here in just a second. Donna, applique is my favorite. My favorite method in quilting is applique. But my piecing has improved so much in these 53 blocks. I still got a ways to go, but my piecing is so much better now than it was 53 blocks ago. Vicki, I'd say we are like, uh, we've got 12 flying geese to make, <laughs> and then we got to put them all together. Miss Ronnie, yesterday, yesterday we made the hill and valley block. So you might have caught the videos out of order in the playlist. Yesterday we made the hill and valley block. Can a satin stitch presser foot be used in applique? Absolutely. I have, actually my machine came with a couple of different feet that would work when doing a satin stitch. I think as long as you can move your needle from left to right without breaking a needle and you can see really well your work, yes. Kim, I, I don't have a lot of patience for hand stuff. I'm trying to acquire patience for doing handwork. My favorite is machine applique. <laughs> I'm trying to develop some patience with my hand stitching. I have patience for a lot of stuff. Hand stitching is not one of those things. <laughs> All right, everybody. We're going to start with one side of these next sets of flying geese. They have blue on both sides. Blue on both sides. We'll move to the next one. Which one do you think is worse? Sending a text to someone that you didn't mean to send them? Like the text was meant for someone else and you sent it to the wrong person? Or clicking on an ex's photo on Facebook accidentally when you're scrolling through their page. <laughs> I don't have to worry about the second one because I've blocked all my exes on Facebook. So that doesn't happen to me. There's no chance that I would be scrolling through looking at their stuff. But which one do you think would be worse? Sending a text to the wrong person or accidentally clicking a heart or like on your ex's photo. <laughs> Dawn wants to know, what does the whole block look like again? All right, let me pull that on the screen for just a second. There's the whole block on the screen.
So now we can go back and finish sewing of these together. I clicked off my wrong video. Hold on a second. <laughs> there we go. Sending the text to the wrong person or accidentally clicking like or love on your ex's photo. All right, y'all, just like we did with these, we're lining up on the bottom and sewing of that connecting seam. I'm gonna work my way down one side. There's gonna be lots of sewing for this block. Now, I will say that I've been scrolling through Facebook before, just, you know, with my finger on my main page and accidentally clicked like on a post I knew nothing about just because my finger hit it. <laughs> that does happen. That does happen. I could see where that would happen pretty easily. Lots of triangles in this block. Can this block be 12 and a half inch square? Luann, this block that we're doing today is going to finish at 10 and a half inches. However, if you did the math and converted everything, you could make it a 12 inch block. I don't know how big you'd have to cut your pieces, but you could. You'd have to do the math. <laughs> Still sewing, still sewing. Lots of sewing. Last one on this set and on this side. I've actually sent the t a text to the wrong person before. <laughs> I sent a text to a stranger thinking it was my daughter's phone one time. Forgetting that she had a new phone. I left her old phone number in my phone and was texting some man I didn't know. <laughs> All right, we're gonna start pressing those over to one side. 
There's lots of them. Let's see, there should be eight. And I like to trim my little tails off when doing flying geese when the whole unit is made. You could trim them off now if you wanted to. I like to do it once the whole block is done or the whole unit is done. That's just me. All right, here's another funny one, y'all. Here's another funny one. We're going to get personal for a second. Which one do you think is worse? Passing gas in front of your crush, your date, or your significant other. Or passing gas during a presentation, like at work in front of other people during a presentation. Which one do you think is worse? <laughs> I didn't make up these questions. I just copied them off the Google. <laughs> Which one do you think is worse? All right, so there's the first side added. We'll be adding those here in just a second. In front of a date, let's say you're on your first date. That would be embarrassing. That would be embarrassing. But during a presentation, I think that would be even more embarrassing. <laughs> right? That would be pretty embarrassing. Like during a live video, that would be so embarrassing. <laughs> All right, we have eight more little tiny squares or triangles to sew on. So I'm going to go ahead and do that while y'all are working on this last question. Flipping them over. I'm moving everything. You can see my sewing machine right here. I'm going to put them off to the side and just stack them right there. Matching up the bottom raw edge. We're sewing the last eight triangles. That would be very embarrassing, I think. <laughs> Starting a live video with your microphone muted is embarrassing enough. I can't imagine doing that. Flip it over, line it up, and sew it. Flip it over, line it up, and sew it. <laughs> Same thing over and over. This I would call a high maintenance quilt block. She's got lots of work to do. She's high maintenance.
Ooh, I've only got two left to do. One and the very last one. Dun, 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 dun. Okie doke. Flying geese, flying geese all over the place. Flying geese all over the place. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. I'm going to give these a press. Hello, everybody, in case you joined us. In case you're just joining, we're playing uh, questions today. Which is worse? Which is which is worse? Also, in case you just joined us, this is our official last block for this series. I have something fun at the end of this video I want to show you, so if you can stick around. If not, you'll have to come back on the replay. Once our flying geese units are pressed, then we can arrange this block all out on the board. I thought Getting the flying geese made first, like this, would break up all of these pieces and make it a lot less confusing versus laying out a million triangles on the board and then trying to make sure that we kept the right order, right? So now we have three main pieces that we're laying out instead of 20 million little triangles all over the board. <laughs> So there's the main sections of this block. You should have eight flying geese with blue at the top, four flying geese, blue and red, and one two and a half by two and a half inch square. And while everybody's catching up to this point, I'm just gonna trim off these little tails that hang over the edge. Make them all nice and pretty. I like these fabrics together, the blue and that gold with that brick red. She's pretty. Trimming, trimming, got one left to do. Let's go ahead and measure these flying geese in case you're wondering how big they are. Let's see. It should be one, two, three, four, four and a half inches wide and two and a half inches tall. Two and a half by four and a half. That's the finished size of our flying geese for today. Just in case you were wondering. I love these scissors. These are just uh, Westcott. Westcott. 
I like them a lot. Do you know these scissors have lasted three and a half years? <laughs> and I cut all kinds of stuff with them. Wow, it's so great to see everybody today. Happy Friday. It's Friday. Wanda, did you say you're craving Italian food from Carabas? It's been a long time since I've been to Carabas. That sounds delicious. That sounds delicious. All right, I'm going to take a sip of water and then we're going to lay out this block. Danielle, we're still going to be doing uh, videos for this series live, but this is the last quilt block that's going into this quilt. So we're going to transition the videos and start doing some other fun stuff for this quilt. All right, here we go. Let's lay out this block. We have the one, two and a half by two and a half. She goes right in the middle. Make sure you can see my whole board. There we go. We're gonna take one of our split flying geese and we're gonna lay it out just like this. And y'all, this block, it doesn't matter which way you turn it, it's the same. So my right side up is also your right side up. Let's lay out the flying geese with the red first, because that's the most important. They're going to rotate right around that center block, just like this. Pretty, right? And now we can just fill in each one of the other spaces. Just like that. I have strings everywhere. Like this. Ooh, I really like these colors. And I like that. And I want to leave this on the screen for a few minutes before we start sewing so that you can really see the layout for these pieces. That is pretty. I like that a lot. Yes, the blank spots will be, uh, you can, wow, there's so many directions you can go with the blank spots. We're going to get to that here in just a little bit, but yes. Yes. So much you could do with the blank spaces. Oh, that's better. I like these colors. I like them a lot. We're ending on a good note with our blocks. I like these colors. So let's see, which one do you think is worse? Rap music or country music? You, you might like both of them. I like both of them. You might like one or the other. You might not like either one of them. Rap music or country music, which one is worse? I like both. <laughs> Although the rap music, I like like 80s rap. <laughs> Will this block be a good one for a teenage boy's quilt? I think so. Wanda, I think you could pick out some guy fabric and do this quilt. And it would look like, you know, a good quilt for 
a dude, a teenage guy. You could pick out, you know, fabric that really is meets his interest or his colors, you know, or to match his room or something. Just being really honest, I love this quilt block, but she's got a lot of sewing. I don't know if I personally would make a whole quilt out of this one block. That's a lot of sewing little triangles. I like my blocks to come together a little bit faster than this, but that's just me. <laughs> that's just me. Jerry, you're right. I did say it's high maintenance. Once you get the flying geese done, and that's really why I approached this block first. Can you imagine laying out all the little triangles in place and then try, you know, picking them up that way? If you break it down and make the flying geese first like we did, then you're just laying out the block. I still think she's high maintenance because, you know, that's sewing... 24 little triangles. To me, she takes more time than a lot of our other blocks. Oh, your grandchildren requested quilts for Christmas. That's awesome. You better get to sewing. You better get to sewing. <laughs> you better get to sewing. Rap music or country music? I like them both. There's a lot of rap music I don't like. And I'm going to be really honest. There's a lot of the newer country music I don't like. I like a country man to sound like, you know, deep and like a man, you know. I don't like a lot of the newer country music. The older country music. I love it. Ah, uh, Laura, you said that would be a hot mess for you to sew. Well, if you start with a lot of the other blocks that we've done in this series, do those first. You'll get some practice in. And then come back to this block. A lot of the blocks we've done have a few flying geese units in it. That'll give you some practice. And then approach the blocks that have all flying geese. Mickey, I don't know. I just call it, I just, I'm calling her a she. <laughs> you can call it a he if you want. <laughs> You're so welcome for the PDFs. You are welcome. You're so welcome. We're going to go ahead and start piecing this together. So let's see. To do that, which would be the easiest? Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to separate into three rows just like this. I do think there's probably several different ways you could sew this block together at this point. And this is the way that I plan on doing mine. Three rows, a skinny one in the middle, just like this. Let's start with the one in the middle. We're going to flip it over. <clears throat> We're going to sew this middle block right onto this flying geese unit. While we're right here, I'm just going to flip over that piece and finger press it for a minute and bring over the other flying geese. Make sure it's going in the right direction. Flip it over. 
match up that raw edge and sew that seam. So there's the middle section. I'm gonna go ahead and press those two seams. I'm pressing my two seams right towards that middle block. Just like that. Nice and pretty. Nice and pretty. We flew through those worse, you know, which which is worse. I have one more of those. Which is worse, being hot or being cold? Which is worse? So that middle section is done. Let's go ahead and approach this row right here. We're going to be doing some chain piecing. We're going to flip him right over and sew that seam that joins those two pieces. So let's finger press that open just like that. We're bringing in this third piece. Make sure it's going in the right direction. We're going to flip it and sew it. Before I even take that off of the sewing machine, we have two more pieces that need to come together for this row. So let's go ahead and flip him over and sew that seam that joins these two pieces. So what we just did is we joined those three sections and these two pieces right there. I'm going to give those a press. So I guess the trickiest part about all this is that when you bring them back, make sure they're all going in the right places. <laughs> Even my flying geese have gotten so much better since we started this series. Look, point, point, point. So we have the first section that we did and we have this group of two. Now once you join this group of two, you'll notice that this seam is exactly the same. We're gonna sew this seam to make this one long strip right there. Then we're just repeating the process down on the other side, right? Line it up nice and straight. Nice and straight. I agree, being hot is probably the worst. I don't like being cold, but you can always snuggle up. <laughs> snuggle up in a quilt. You can always snuggle up, but being hot for me is the worst. My nose gets stopped up. I can't sleep when I'm hot. 
I get grumpy when I'm hot. <laughs> That's the worst for me. Wow, look how pretty this is going to be. So there is that section. There's that section. And we're just repeating the process right down here. We're going to flip over. Let's see. Let's flip him over and sew that seam. So that's done. Now we can add the third piece right there. <clears throat> and while we're still here, let's go ahead and flip him right over and sew the seam that connects these two pieces. Now we're gonna press these. Right, it does come together really pretty. Let me get these pressed. So that group of three goes just like this. And then the group of two go on the other side. Here's a question that I had from the other day and we ran out of time before I asked it. It's not a which is worse question, but it would be a fun question to ask. Make sure when you bring these pieces back in before you sew them that your little triangles are facing the right direction, <laughs> right? Make sure that happens. Here's our last question for the day. It is not a which is worse question, but if you had a magic tree, it's hypothetical, y'all, hypothetical. If you had a magic tree in your backyard and it could grow one thing, you get to choose, but not money. Not a money tree. But this tree grew something. What would you pick? What kind of tree would you pick? Like a thread tree? It grows thread. An Oreo cookie tree, <laughs> cheeseburger tree, fabric tree. What kind of magic tree would you have in your backyard? It cannot be a money tree. Something different. Get creative and think about it. Will you measure a flying geese unit before you join it? It's two and a half by four and a half. These little flying geese units two and a half by four and a half let's take a measurement of them once they're joined four and a half one two three four four and a half <laughs> four and a half by four and a half four and a half one two three four five six and six and a half so there's your measurements, two and a half by four and a half individually. This group of two should measure four and a half by four and a half. And the group of three should measure four and a half by six and a half. There we go. What kind of tree would you pick to grow in your backyard? A magic tree, it could grow anything except for money. What would you pick? We've got this seam left to do.
I'm going to give that a press. And then to finish up this block, y'all, we have two more seams. That's it. <clears throat> two more seams to finish up this block. There we go. We're going to be attaching this right there. So we're going to flip it over. I'm going to try to line up the seams right here to those seams right there. I'm going to try my best to get those points. You can throw some pins in there if that is helpful for you. Or you could glue baste it. That might be helpful too. I'm just going to hold them in place with my finger. Okay, look. We have one more seam left for this block. We're gonna just finger press that open. Just finger press it open, and we're gonna flip this last section right over. Try to match up those two middle seams and sew this last seam. There's lots of seams in this block, y'all. Seams going every which way. Every which way. That was the last seam on the last official quilt block for this quilt. Let me go give this a press and we're gonna take a look at our finished block. Last official seam. She is a pretty block. She is pretty. Let me just give it a press from the front and then we're gonna take a look at this block before we move on. Cause I have some fun stuff to share with you. <laughs> fun stuff. All right, here is our finished starstruck geese block. She is a pretty one. She's a pretty one. I like that a lot. I like that a lot. There is a lot to do in this block, right? <laughs> a lot of sewing for this quilt block. Yes, the last seam, last seam, last quilt block for this, for this quilt. I think we ended on a really spectacular note. I like this block a lot, even though she's a lot of work. <laughs> she's a lot of work. 
She has a lot of work. She is a lot of work. I really like that red little, little burst right in the middle. Diana, you got your points on yours. That is so good. That is so good. I'm so happy for you. I'm so happy for you. Yeah, don't you love it when that happens? <laughs> I love it when that happens. For It doesn't happen all the time for me, y'all. Even when I try to be really careful, it doesn't always happen. Yeah, she was a lot of work, but she's worth it. She's worth it. I think she's gorgeous. Now, if y'all are still sewing this block today, then you might want to just take a pause because you can finish up once we're done. You can come back and pause the video. I agree, it does kind of look like Civil War fabrics a little bit, doesn't it? You'll be able to pause the video and finish up the block. I don't want you to miss out on what we're going to cover next. She's pretty. All right. title of the video said big announcement this was our last final block for this quilt we're still going to be coming live we're still going to be coming live every day until this quilt is finished up however we're going to take a small little break saturday today's friday saturday sunday and monday we're not coming on live and that's going to give everybody some relaxing three days to work on blocks. I know many of you just came in halfway through the series or you just started watching the series maybe a week ago and you want to start making some blocks. We're going to take a break for three days and make sure that you're able to make some blocks if you need to. We're coming back Tuesday. Tuesday we're coming back live, okay? Let me show you the layout that I've chosen for my quilt. And with that said, y'all, y'all don't have to use this layout for your quilt. You could arrange your quilt in any which way you want. Here is my final layout that I'm going to use. This does print out as a PDF. It's in the description box of this video if you want to grab that and print it off. You will be able to print that. It's there waiting for you. You'll notice there's a grid with empty squares. We're going to be covering all of that in the lives. So we're transitioning from making blocks into filling in and making this into a quilt. Today is Friday. Miss Vicki, it's Friday where I am. So this is the final arrangement on how I'm going to lay out my blocks. You'll see a couple of empty spaces in here. I have ideas for how I want to fill in mine. However, they're just suggestions. So you are totally free to take creative liberties and do something totally different if you want. If we fill in all the little empty squares that you see on the screen, we're going to have a quilt that measures 88 by a hundred inches. So you can see why we needed to wrap up making blocks. We're there, we're at a queen size. We're at a queen size right now. The blocks you see, I color organized them. The green ones with the 12, those are all of our 12 inch blocks that we've done. The red ones with the 10, that's a 10 inch block and I'm going to add a small little border around mine to make them 12 inches. You don't have to if you don't want to, but that's what I'm going to do. The blue blocks with the eight, those are our eight inch blocks that we've done. And the little yellow ones with the six represent our six inch blocks. 
They're all there. 53 blocks. 53 blocks. Now, if this quilt is too big, if you think this quilt is too big for something for you to tackle, you are free to split it up, right? Split it up into two throw size quilts. Split it up into three wall hangings, however you want to do it. They're your blocks. You've done all the work. You have creative liberties to make anything you want to out of the blocks. It's a good, it, it's a queen size quilt, y'all. That's a good size quilt. But if you do make this quilt, just like you see here on the screen, for the backing fabric, I wanted to go ahead and let you know how much of that you would need because fabric isn't something that's easily come by right now, right? I'm hoping that changes really soon. Nine yards of 53 inch fabric for the back of this quilt. nine yards of 53 inch fabric for the backing of this quilt next week instead of making blocks tuesday we're going to come back and i'm going to show you how i plan on filling in some of the empty spaces like uh if you look at the last column on the right you'll see two green blocks two blue eight inch blocks there's a space right in the middle I'm going to give you some ideas of what you could do there to split that up and fill it in. You might have made some extras of some of the blocks, right? Like uh, when we were making the log cabin block, I don't know if y'all remember or not, but we made the log cabin block. And during that video, I showed you how you could make the log cabin with scraps and trim it up as you make the block, right? And so doing that, I made this little guy he's eight inches I want to put him in my quilt because he was made during that video so he's going to actually fill in one of my eight inch eight inch spaces I might have said it wrong miss Connie yeah, yeah, it's supposed to be 43 inches. Nine yards of 43 inch fabric. I might have said it wrong when I was saying it. If I said 53 inches, I said it incorrectly. <laughs> 43 inches is, a, is an average width of fabric when you buy it off the bolt like 44 inches 42 43 43 inch fabric i just said it incorrectly that was an oops yes <laughs> So yeah, I went to throw this guy in there. So one of the empty spaces in between the eight blocks that shows up empty, I'm going to put this one in there. But I'm going to show you different things and ways you can fill in those spaces. We might do some snowball border. We might do some pinwheel border. We might do some four patch. We might do some half square triangles because... This is a sampler type of quilt. I want it to represent different units that we've made our blocks from in the empty squares you see around the colored squares. If that makes you nervous, you can absolutely use a solid border. You see the little two squares that go all the way around the perimeter of this quilt? You could do that in a solid fabric. Absolutely. So many different things you could do. Susan, I don't, I'm not sure if you can see on the screen or not, but you see the little empty squares that go all the way around? That's gonna be a four inch border to finish off this quilt. If you want to make it bigger and add more borders, absolutely do it. 
there are no rules. If you want to add more borders to it, absolutely. You uh, are going to have a bigger quilt and you might need more backing fab fabric. I'm not sure. Can we send our quilts for you to quilt if you want to? Sure. There is a small nominal fee. <laughs> yeah, I do long arming for, for other people. So if, if you're going to make the big quilt, but you're not quite sure how to quilt something that big on your domestic machine, absolutely. You can contact me several different ways. In the description box, you'll find a link from my business Facebook page, Lisa Cape and Quilts. You could send me a message there. Uh, if you don't do Facebook, there's a link to my Etsy shop in the description box. You can send me a message on Etsy and we can talk about it. And if you want to send me your quilt top, I would be honored to quilt it for you. And Sally is absolutely right. If you want to purchase one great big backing for this quilt, like a piece of 108 fabric, absolutely. Let's see, you would need, what, three yards? Just doing the math off the top of my head. Three yards of 108. Oh, two and a half. Sally did the math for me. Thank you so much, Sally. Two and a half yards of fabric if you purchase 108 wide fabric for the back. Yes, you could do a piano key border. Absolutely, that would look stunning, wouldn't it? That would look stunning. Yes, you could embroider happy at home, quarantine quilt 2020 on it or something. Absolutely. You could put that on the quilt label. There's so much, so much we could do. I'm thinking I want to do different stuff and really make it like sampler, sampler, samplerly, and do different kinds of stuff in the empty spaces. That's just a suggestion. You don't have to do what I do. <laughs> now I know several of you have only made the 12 inch quilt blocks. So of course this layout is not gonna work, uh, but your quilt will come together much easier and faster if you've only made the 12 inch quilt blocks along the way. Also, one other thing you'll find down in the description box is the last PDF of the little pictures. And so in that PDF, there's blocks 49 through 53. If you're making your own little journals, your own little books for your blocks, that PDF is in the description box too. And uh, that gives you all of the rest of the pictures for the blocks, including today's block, Starstruck Geese. Actually, all three of those PDFs are in the description box in case you haven't gotten them yet. So much stuff in the description box today. <laughs> All right, does anybody have any questions about the layout, about today's block? You're so welcome. You're so welcome. Yep, we're taking a three-day break, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. I want to give everybody a catch-up time. Give you some time to catch up before we progress. And I'm hoping that when we come back Tuesday on the wall behind me, I'm going to lay out my chunks just like you see here on the screen. They'll be laid out on the board. Sally, we might do a Zoom this evening because I've been working, working, working. I could really have some downtime, some non-stress time. And uh, 
Harlan might want to play some golf, Wii Golf or something. So we might do a Zoom tonight. If not tonight, we will do one tomorrow. Y'all are so welcome. It's so great to spend time with everybody. Will you teach us how to make a label? I have several label quilts, label, quilt label videos here on my channel already. You might want to check them out if you haven't seen them. Zoom. What is Zoom? Zoom is where we get together and I can see you and you can see me and we can see everybody who is there and we can hear everybody. It's like a conference via computer or telephone. It's really pretty awesome because not only do you get to see me, but I get to see everybody else and have conversations back and forth like we're talking. And we do that on the Creative Crew group. There's a link for that in the description box in case you haven't joined that yet. Y'all are so welcome. Y'all are so welcome. This has been so much fun, right? I mean, the main reason for this whole series when it started wasn't so much to make a quilt, although that's what we're going to do. <laughs> that's what we're going to do. But it was really to be a distraction in our days. You know, this has not been easy for the vast majority of all of us, right? Not being able to spend time with our family, our friends, Working from home when we're used to going away to our job, uh, you know, financially, it's been a stress for so many people. It's just been a stressful situation. And so the main purpose of this series was to come and be a happy distraction in our day, to spend time with people outside of our house, right? And so I feel like we've accomplished that. And today, Virginia starts phase one, and a majority of the states have either gone into phase one or are preparing to go into phase one. So things are slowly going to transition to where we can come out of the house more if we're careful, right, with restrictions. But we're not just staying at home like that. So... Uh, I think we've accomplished the main part of what we were trying to do with this video. The videos will, we're still going live next week, however long it takes us to put this quilt top together. So we still have those to look forward to. And by then, maybe we'll be in phase two. Who knows? <laughs> how do you do Zoom? Uh, if you don't know how to do Zoom, there are videos here on YouTube. They're not my videos. But there's videos, you know, search how to Zoom on YouTube. Lots of helpful video tutorials showing you how to enter a Zoom or to host a Zoom or to hook up your camera for Zoom. And uh, it's a free app. You download Zoom. Uh, the free version of Zoom offers you 40 minutes of talking time, video time. Uh, I've paid for Zoom, so our Zoom meetings are not restricted by the 40 minutes. We have Zoomed for a couple of hours some nights, so it's a lot of fun. We chit-chat, all kinds of stuff. Usually we start the Zoom at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the creative crew group that's where you have to be a member of that to get the link for the zoom
Vicky wants to know, does it take weight off of the face? Zoom, that is. Wouldn't that be lovely? Wouldn't that be lovely? Y'all, and we do the Zooms, come as you are. Come as you are. You don't have to get dressed up to do a Zoom. That's why I don't record, you know, many, many channels record the Zooms so that they can pull them over here on Facebook or put them in their blog so everyone can watch them. But I want my, whoever joins the Zoom to feel really comfortable. So I do not record them so that I can put them on my YouTube channel or on Facebook. So sometimes my hair is messy in the Zoom. You know, sometimes we're eating snacks and stuff in the Zoom. It's just like visiting a family in person, except we're not in person. Thank y'all so much. Thank y'all so much. Holy moly, 248 people watching. Hello, everybody. In case you're just dropping in, we're finishing up for the day. In case this is your first time on my channel and you're kind of wondering what we're doing, we just made our 53rd quilt block. We made 53 quilt blocks live. They're all different. You can find a playlist on my channel, 53 individual unique quilt blocks. That's what we're doing. We just finished up. What you see on the screen is actually the layout for the quilt that we're going to make with 53 different quilt blocks starting next Tuesday. I'm so glad you're here. If you haven't already, y'all, if y'all want to help my channel out, subscribe. That would help me so much. Just hit subscribe and the bell notification. If you select all, you'll get notified when we go live. Y'all, once this is over, we're going to be doing spontaneous lives. We'll also be doing a regular live weekly. I don't know the specifics on that yet. But if you hit subscribe and the bell notification, you'll get notified. What if, you know, 11 o'clock one night, I can't sleep and I want to paint on fabric and do a live. Wouldn't that be fun? If you subscribe and hit the bell notification, you'll get notified. So if you can't sleep either, you can come and hang out with me. <laughs> it doesn't cost anything to subscribe to the people that you watch on YouTube regularly. And a thumbs up would be really helpful too. Thank you. I want to thank all my moderators y'all this series would not be possible without you i probably i probably would have given up right from the get-go without moderators so i appreciate you all so much it takes a huge weight off of me just like just like what just happened i don't have to worry about that because y'all are on it you're on it love it do you know when your hubby goes back? No, they're still talking about it. They're not sure when he's actually leaving the house to go back to work. <laughs> he's still working from home. Uh, phase one here in Virginia just started today. And so they're discussing when is the best time for them to actually go to work in person. Let's see, let's see. Yeah, there's 53 blocks. We did eight or six blocks on Mother's Day to catch up for the days when we had to take a small little road trip. 53 quilt blocks. I've just been numbering the videos. I know that's confusing. I like to make stuff confusing. <laughs> but if we numbered, okay, so if we numbered the videos same as the block, how would we have numbered 
Mother's Day's video because we did six quilt blocks that day. That's just me thinking out loud. I love you all too. Uh, yeah, one thing I don't do too much of is politics. So, yeah. Don't do lots of politic talking. Uh, thank you all so, so much. Thank you all so much. I hope you take the next couple of days and really relax. If you are going to try to catch up on your blocks, please enjoy it. Don't stress yourself out. Don't stress yourself out. Um, relax. Make up the blocks you can. Don't stress yourself out to do it before Tuesday when we come back, okay? I love you. Don't do that to yourself. Let's see, what kind of work does Harlan do? He is a science and technical photographer for NASA. He gets to do all kinds of cool stuff and take photos of really cool people. He gets to go in wind tunnels and do scientific photography and speed video. He has a really, really cool job. All right, everybody. I love y'all so much. I love y'all so much. I'm excited as we transition into this new phase of this quilt. It's going to be a lot of fun. I love you all. Thank you so much for spending part of your Friday with me. Have an awesome weekend. I'm going to go eat some lunch because my stomach says it's way past my lunchtime. <laughs> it's way past the lunchtime. Hope you have a fantastic weekend. I'll see you on Tuesday. Don't forget, go down into the description box. There's lots of goodies down there, lots of information to download if you want. See you all soon. Bye.